G'day and welcome to this week's video. This week we're going to consider whether a transition to retirement strategy is still worthwhile or not. Now given the substantial changes that we've seen in superannuation law and the government obviously is chasing more revenue um, you know, from superannuation given it's such a big large pot, it's worthwhile just to, to go over the strategy and say right, is it still worth doing or not? Now there are two main benefits that we've always chased when kicking off a transition to retirement strategy. One is the, the earnings on the assets that support a transition to retirement strategy in the past have been exempt from tax. So a clear example of that might be $1 million in a pension, earning 3% or 30 grand per year. In accumulation phase, um, you're gonna pay 15% or four and a half grand tax. If you roll that across to a pension or a transition to retirement pension, you're going to pay zero tax. So it was a four and a half grand tax saving. So that was one of the key elements to the strategy. The other strategy was that you've got the ability to receive some income, which can help to pay for your living um, expenses, which would then supplement the extra income that you would salary sacrifice in a pre-tax um, uh, manner into your superannuation and only pay 15% when compared to your marginal tax rate, which can be as high as 49%. So what hasn't changed? Well, pension payments over the age of 60 uh, to the uh, pensioner, the superannuation pensioner, uh, is still tax-free. So there's no change there whatsoever. It's about the tax within the fund that has changed. For those that are under age 60, um, any pensions are paid um, it can be taxable at your marginal tax rate, less a very attractive 15% tax rebate, and any money that comes from the tax-free component of your fund, so that's money that you've put in that's non-concessional from an after-tax dollars where you have not claimed a concessional tax rate, uh, is not taxed regardless. So that's where it can still be uh, an advantage to kick off a transition to retirement strategy prior to turning age 60. So that hasn't changed. I think a good example might be Max, age 62, so we know the money he receives um, is going to be uh, taxed at um, 0% uh, in his own name. So under the old rules, so we've got $400,000 here taxed at 3.5%, it'll be 14 grand, uh, it will be taxed at zero. So that's in a, a, a transition to retirement pension. Max is still working. Under the new rules, um, same figures, taxed at 15%. So there's an extra two $2,100 tax here. So, but let's look at the other side of the equation where Max earns $80,000 per year. Um, the superannuation pension payments now allow, allow him to increase his salary sacrifice up to his maximum amount of $25,000 per year. And that concessional contribution is now the same for everyone, where previously it was 30 and 35 for those over age 50. So if we look at the super contributions for Max, 80 grand at the SG contribution, the employer contribution of 9.5% uh, is $7,600, which leaves Max $17,400 that he can put in a salary sacrifice. Let's look at the saving on that. His marginal tax rate on that $17,000, 400 would be 34.5%. If that goes in at the superannuation tax rate of 15, that's a saving of 19.5 or nearly 20%, which equates to nearly $3,400. So in looking at it like that, I would say absolutely still well worthwhile, just not as worthwhile as it was, but still money that's there to be you know, saved. Um, and I think as we lead up into retirement, we've got to make sure we make all these posts a winner and get as, yeah, keep as much of our own money as possible. And the more money we keep, the more effective compounding interest, and it will make a difference to how long your money will last. Thank you for listening. Really appreciate your time. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video or subscribe to the, uh, the channel. That'd be great. Thank you for listening and we'll speak to you soon.